When it comes to creating really great looking photos with a lot of depth and dimension, pro photographers have a few tricks up their sleeve, even in Lightroom. In today's video, I wanna show you guys a few of those tricks to help make your photos pop a little bit more, add a little bit of depth and dimension, just overall give your photos more of a finished and polished look. My name is Austin James Jackson, professional landscape photographer from Southern Utah. I'm really, really excited that you guys are here in today's video, we're going to be talking, like I said, about some little finishing tricks, some uh, different things that pro photographers do, which are mostly going to live under the local adjustments or the masking options here in Lightroom. A lot of photographers will adjust the basic sliders, they'll go through the tone curve, um, they'll go through the hue saturation sliders, and they will call it a day. They'll say, this is perfect for my image, and they're missing out, they're leaving a lot on the table by not using those local adjustments or the masking. If you haven't used the local adjustments before, you ought to start using them, um, but I'm going to show you how to use it in today's video. If you do use the local adjustments, I still think there's going to be a lot of value in this video and things that you might be able to pick up on. Let's go ahead and jump right over into Lightroom here where you can see I have this image. Now, a lot of photographers would call this good. We have our before image and our after. You know, I've made some light adjustments, some exposure, a few of the sliders in here, some hue saturation stuff. Um, I did a tone curve, I did a little bit in the HSL, and I did some lens corrections, and that was it. It got me to the point that I'm at now. Like I said, a lot of photographers would call it a day. That's as good as the image is gonna get. I wanna show you how I can kinda of take this image up over the top. So where the adjustments are going to live, you're gonna go over here into this little circle um, on the very far right if you have your Lightroom updated, uh, which if you don't, I highly recommend updating it because there was some pretty substantial updates to this section last year that make this tool a heck of a lot better. Now, first things first, I wanna create a little bit of glow on the horizon. I'm gonna do that with a radial gradient. I'm just gonna click and drag it out. Anything that's white inside this gradient is going to have whatever adjustments we apply to it. Anything that's black will not. Um, and anything that's in between will partially have that adjustment. If you are want to look at the photo, like a lot of times people will stand here and be like, well, I don't know, you know, where this should go. So if you want to look at the photo, open up the tab here for masks and then uncheck show overlay and then you can move it freely uh, right where you want it. Now, when you're adding some glow to the horizon, I recommend putting the center of the circle about where the sun would be. The sun is low down here, but I want this glow to start about right there, just a little bit above. So that is looking pretty good. Now, we're going to probably raise the exposure. We are going to raise the highlights. We're going to raise the saturation. And we're going to come down in here and... We're going to drop the dehaze. And then, man, I'm trying to think. I might, yeah, let's just give it a little punch on the brighter spots, just like that. We can bring the exposure up. Oh, and we want to bring this feather up. Bring the feather up to 100. Then we can apply this a little bit stronger. We'll bring the exposure up. We might actually bring the highlights down while bringing the exposure up. You can kind of play around with this to give you the desired effect. You can see somewhere in there is looking pretty good. Now the problem is we are brightening um, our foreground rocks, which we don't want to do. There's some really powerful tools here in Lightroom that, like I said, were added about a year ago where we can subtract. What we're going to do is subtract from this mask. Um, let's actually make this a little bit larger like that. So we're going to hit subtract on our mask. We are going to subtract. We could try select background or select sky. Um, but I don't know if that's going to work that well. So instead, let's just subtract luminance range. And then we can click on the rock. This is going to subtract um, anything that matches the luminance of whatever we selected. So basically anything that's the same brightness. So all these rocks are pretty dark, so it's going to subtract from all of them. Now let's toggle our mask so you can see now this is what our mask is doing. So it's brightening these areas back here. It's not brightening these rocks in the foreground, which is perfect. Now we can see before and after. Now that we have a pretty good selection going here, you know, you can tweak the settings. You can adjust this. I would probably, yeah, pop those whites. That's what we were looking for. Um, those popping the whites is just going to give you a little bright spot, which I personally like. 
You can move this down as well. Just get it in there nice and good. I think that's looking pretty nice. So we've put a little pop in that area that also creates some depth in my scene because now we have essentially made the background a little brighter behind the dark rocks, which is perfect. Now, additionally, I might go in and I might wanna bring up the shadows of some of these dark rocks. I'm just gonna create a new mask. We're gonna go luminance range once again and select the rocks. This will create a mask of just the rocks. Now you can make some adjustments to the luminance range over here if you want. You don't have to and don't worry if this doesn't make sense to you. But as you slide this, it'll select more on the luminance range. Um, I like to slide the bar on the right. Essentially anything that's within the square or the rectangle over here, right where my cursor is, that's going to be totally white, 100% selected. Anything in this range here is going to be partially selected. So you kind of can increase, it's almost like increasing the feather when you bring this um, little slider up. Right about there looks pretty good. Uncheck show overlay. Let's go ahead and just bring those shadows up a touch. I don't want to do it too much. Some people would make the mistake of over brightening it. You don't want to do that. Just bring it up a touch. I just want to bring back a little bit of detail right in there. So that's looking pretty good. Now we're at the point where, you know, there's a lot of different things that we can do. One of the things that I like doing um, is creating a mask and I like to grab a linear gradient and I like to make it nice and soft like that drag it down and I'm doing this to the foreground and I just want to darken it a hair. And then I actually want to do the same thing to the top of the photo. So I'm going to create a new mask. We'll go linear gradient. We'll create a nice soft effect there. And this is kind of like applying a vignette, but we're going to apply a little bit stronger of a vignette in just a second here, which I'll show you guys. Now, as I look at this, there's a lot of other things I can do. I don't want to overdo it, but, you know, I'm trying to think where we should take this thing so that I can show you guys some more tricks here. Um, one thing that you might want to do is go back and adjust that first mask. If you want to make it a little bit softer, you certainly could by dragging this out. You know, you could adjust the exposure. Maybe I'm going to go right there. Let's actually make this area just a little bit brighter. So we're going to create a new mask. We're going to do radial gradient once again. This one we're just going to make small. I'm going to uncheck show overlay. Yeah, I'm just going to punch that spot and just create that hot spot in there, which I like to give my photo, you know, a little bit more punch to it. Um, now you can see when we're looking at my histogram, my photo is pretty well represented from the highlights all the way to the shadows, which is good. I'm pretty happy with that. So you can see how powerful this technique is to go back in there. You know, at any point in time, you can select a mask just by clicking on it and then make more adjustments. So maybe I want to decrease the contrast in the shadows. Um, you know, the possibilities really, like I said, they're pretty much endless. So that's looking pretty good. Now, the last thing that I would probably do here um, is to apply a vignette. Um, there's, of course, many other things that you could do. You know, if I wanted to add a little bit of texture in the sky, I could make that selection, bring up the texture in here. That actually looks pretty good. Let me show you how to make a, a sky selection. Sorry if this is a little jumbled here, um, but I'm just trying to show you guys as many of these different little tools as possible. So I can create a new mask. Let's uh, select the sky and we'll see how it does. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. There it's done a pretty nice job. I'm pretty happy with that. So we can come in here. Now let's just make some adjustments to the sky individually. Maybe we'll drop those highlights. Actually, let's go ahead and use the curve. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just create some contrast in the sky. I'm going to drag the blacks point up a touch. Maybe drag not going to mess with the highlights point there. Somewhere in there looks pretty good. I might drop the saturation now because that's kind of adding a little too much saturation as I add contrast. And then usually the texture of the clarity might be nice. You don't want too much clarity there as you can see. You don't want too much texture either. But right in there looks pretty good. I don't want to mess with the dehaze. Um, 
can try messing with the sharpness. You can see I just like to go through here and just play around. Um, additionally, you can use this tool to add some color. So, you know, if you wanted to paint in a little bit of color, you could do that as well. Obviously, it's not going to look good in this particular photo, but that's an instance that you could certainly use. Um, and let's just, you know, drop the highlights a touch. As I'm editing, one thing that I want to make really clear is I always go back and make adjustments. So now I see maybe this hot spot is just a little too hot. Let's drop the exposure just a little bit. Somewhere in there is looking pretty nice. Now, alternatively, you can also go in, create a new mask and select. Um, you can try selecting the background, but a lot of times it's better, you know, if I'm trying to select just the foreground, a lot of times it's better to select sky and then go up here, three dots and invert that mask. Now you can see we have a good selection of these foreground rocks. And I might just try and decrease the contrast in our foreground. Just like that. I might darken it down just a little bit. Okay, so you can see we've made quite a few masks already before and after, before and after. Is the sky oversaturated? Yes, it probably is. I would probably turn that down later. But I want to show you guys one more thing here, how I create a vignette. Now, yes, you absolutely can create a vignette using the sliders in Lightroom. However, this is so much better of a way. It's a so much better way however you say that, uh, to create a vignette here in Lightroom. Reason being because this is a totally customizable vignette, so you can adjust it how you see fit, as opposed to the vignette slider, which perfectly darkens everything in a perfect oval, um, so that all the edges are equal darkness. A lot of times you might want less darkness on one edge than the other, so this is a much better way to make a vignette if you ask me. Let me show you guys how it's done. We're going to create a new mask. We are going to use radial gradient once again. Click and drag. Make that thing nice and big. Put it in the center. Now we're going to invert the mask again. Uh, click those three dots and click invert. You may want to decrease the feather here. And you may also, um, if you're running out of space on your screen, just hit command minus on a Mac, control minus on a PC, and you can make it a little bit larger. Somewhere in there looks pretty good. Now let's just drop the exposure a touch. We're gonna to zoom back in here. Just like that. Now I'm really liking how dark it's getting on the foreground, but I'm not liking how dark the sky is getting. So we can just start to drag this up. Maybe we'll bring it out a little bit more. Somewhere right in there looks good. I like to just drop the exposure. Um, and you can, you know, if you want to protect the highlights, you can kind of bring the highlights slider up, which sometimes I'll do. But we can go before and after, before and after. That gives me a nice polished look. Additionally, I like to kind of counteract the vignette by doing the opposite. I like to go with a radial gradient right in the center of my photo like that and just bring the exposure up a touch. On a photo like this where it's really bright in the center, um, it may not be necessary. You may want to just bring the highlights down. Um, but on most of my photos, I'll do this and it'll make a big difference. So now you can see that's what we're looking at. Um, lastly, I'm just going to go back to my regular sliders and I'm just going to drop the vibrance and the saturation that I had increased earlier to about right there. I'm going to drop the shadows back down again. So don't be afraid to go back in and adjust these sliders after the fact um, but to me at least i think we are looking pretty good we're in business so you can see before and after before and after let's just toggle just the masks because that's mostly what we talked about um, you can see before using any masks and after i don't know how long this video is i'm guessing it's probably about 15 minutes but you can see just how much we've transformed our image further than what you would have done if you were you know um, not using the masks and you were just using the regular sliders so that's just kind of a little pro tip for you hopefully that helps
So, hey, thank you guys so much for being here. Really hope it was helpful. I will mention if you guys didn't already know, I like to mention every few weeks on my YouTube channel, I do have a podcast that's called the Learn Landscape Photography Podcast. If you're here on YouTube watching this video, I know you guys probably want to get better at landscape photography. Um, and I know there's a lot of times where you can't just sit and watch YouTube all day. You know, you're driving or and you can only listen. For that reason, I started this podcast uh, a little more than a year ago. I've got a ton of great guests on there. Um, I do some solo episodes episodes as well. And every episode is really focused on helping you guys to get better at photography. There's concrete tips in every episode that are going to help you to improve your photography. Again, that's the Learn Landscape Photography Podcast. Find it anywhere that you find podcasts. Otherwise, here on the YouTube, uh, make sure to like and subscribe. This video helps me to grow this channel. Um, and I post a new one every single week. And like I said, my goal is just to help you take better photos. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Austin James Jackson, and we'll see you guys next time.